Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Corley from Figure It Out Productions. The following video is a video of some kind, and I hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, it's Adam here, and today we're going to be talking about our friend, the Atari 7800. Yes, for real. It's been quite a few years since we've done anything on that, and this shirt used to fit better when I did, but, you know, things happen. Uh, anyway, so before we do that, though, if you guys can do me a favor, please like this video, comment down below, subscribe if you've never done that before, as well as check out all my social media stuff in the description. I've got Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, Patreon, there's my spread shirt, and there's also my travel channel called Flying and Eating, which is probably partially responsible for why the shirt doesn't fit. Hmm. Anyway, so yeah, we're going to be talking about the Atari 7800, specifically two new devices that have recently come out from it from a company called Retro HQ. Uh, Retro HQ makes a bunch of um, basically modern day electronics and toys for retro game consoles. Uh, we'll talk about them a little bit more in a minute, but I also want to give a huge shout out here to RetroTowers.co.uk, which is a British website that actually sells this stuff. Uh, and to Dan's credit, he's the guy who runs the website, he was like, hey man, do you want to do this? And I was like, yes. So he sent this to me for free for the purposes of review, and now we all get to uh, talk about it and enjoy it, thanks to Dan. So if you guys could support him, I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in this or the other device. There's two devices in this video. Uh, there's a link in the description. You can check those out or any of the other stuff that Dan has. So huge shout out once again to RetroTowers.co.uk. Now, the two devices we have here, one is a controller adapter and one is a very special cartridge. Uh, both of which were made by, as I mentioned before, Retro HQ. Their focus has been on flashcards for systems that, frankly, Crix, who makes the EverDrive, doesn't seem to have any interest in. I've done videos on a few of them, uh, things like uh, they, they did a game drive for the Atari Lynx, the Atari Jaguar, the Neo Geo Pocket. I did videos on all of them. They're all the pretty great things, as is this, to be completely frank, you know, to just jump that out there. Um, and I also, again, want to give a shout out to Dan at uh, RetroTowers.co.uk for those, because I'm pretty sure he sent me all of those, and they were all kind of the same deal. It was just well made, well done. So, in other words, Dan's a good guy, and he's been sending me stuff for years, like back when the shirt fit. <laughs> so, yeah, he's a good dude. So, the two items in question, uh, I'm going to be honest with you, neither one needed a separate video. They kind of work really well in conjunction in one particular way, so let's just get on with it. Well, first we'll start with the, the, the easier of the two. Uh, one item is called the Mega 7800. Now, at first glance, it may kind of you might question the point of it. It's just a little controller adapter that fits into the Atari 7800. Now, it's not just a controller adapter. The thing that most people notice when they look at the Atari 7800 or the Atari 2600 is that the controller port on the front is exactly the same as, say, a Sega Genesis or Mega Drive, as it was called in Japan and in Europe. Uh, however, if you actually take the controller, well, specifically on a 7800, and try to play a Sega Genesis controller on the system, it really doesn't work. Uh, you might get a couple of buttons here and there, but for the majority of it, it doesn't really function properly. This basically corrects that problem. Therefore, Sega Genesis or Mega Drive controllers can work on it, hence Mega 7800. Now, you might be like, well, you know, do I really need that? Who cares about being able to make a Sega Genesis controller work on it? Trust me, you care. Because this was the default controller we got in North America with the Atari 7800. Now this is not as bad as the Atari 5200 controller, this is just, this is not a good controller. I'm sorry, it's just not a good controller. Um, now, Europe and the Australians got a better deal, they got this Atari 7800 controller, which is more like an NES controller. By no means a great controller, but far superior to what we got. So you might be like, oh well, can I just import this and I'll just use that? No. Uh, I never got this controller to be able to function. I got two of these, and neither of one will work. They just function as if they're Sega Genesis controllers. They don't actually function on the system. Until, ironically, the Mega 7800. When I use this on the Mega 7800 with the, with the actual 7800, the controller suddenly functions as was originally intended. Don't know, but that's the case. Uh, and actually, to the Mega 7800's credit, it's actually pretty smart. So there's an LED on it, and it will actually detect what kind of controller you're inputting. It supports light guns, two-button controllers, which is actually what this controller comes up as, so it almost makes me wonder if they did that on purpose. I don't actually know. Uh, three-button controllers, which is like your standard Sega Genesis Bean controller, or six-button controllers, which is actually what this one is. This is the more modern, retro-bit, wireless uh, Sega Genesis six-button controller. This totally works on it, which is awesome, which means you now can have it wirelessly. So I really have no complaints about it. That thing is literally just plug-and-play. It's just just neat and corrects the problem so you no longer have to try and use this piece of junk, which is awesome. 
So what's the other device? The one that's installed inside of the system currently is known as the Retro HQ Game Drive 7800. That's the name of their like you know line. And so Crix has the EverDrive, they have the Game Drive, and then the, they just have the ones that are compatible with various systems. Um, this one in particular, it has a special programming port you likely will never need, uh, so if anybody who wants to tinker with it can. But beyond that, it's you know just a 7800 card. It has a micro SD card slot, which is of course what you'll eventually load all your games and stuff onto. We'll talk about that in a minute. But it has one other little special feature that uh, unfortunately renders something else very obsolete. See, a little while back, I was actually intending to do a different video on the 7800, introducing to you the Concerto. This is Fred Quimby's Concerto. This was actually given to me by a guy in my Discord named Miriel Lachio Charms, uh, who is a very nice Irish fellow. And he wanted me to do a video on this, and I totally was planning to, I just never kind of got around to it. Now, this version of the cartridge is, frankly, obsolete. Uh, this one does everything the same as far as it supports Atari 2600 content, it supports Atari 7800 content, it's a very nice cartridge that does exactly what it's supposed to do. This one's just better for one very particular reason. They put an FPGA in it that gives it the ability to have RGB output. Meaning, you, don't, you are no longer limited to the RF signal of the Atari 7800. The Atari 7800 only had that. That was its only video output was its RF, which was bad even at the time in which it came out. It should have at the very least had composite on it, which it didn't. The system can be modified for composite. It can actually be modified for other things more with more extreme elements and parts put into it. But this is a plug and play solution. You put this cartridge right into the system. On the cart itself, it has the DIN 9 Sega Genesis Model 2 RGB port. That therefore allows things like RGB SCART cables to work. Uh, it allows things like what I'm using, the HD RetroVision component cables to work. And if you really wanted to, you could even use things like, and I don't recommend this, but you could use things like Hypercam or Pounds, like Sega Genesis Model 2 or HDMI cables. They would actually work. That's amazing. You now get RGB out of the Atari 2600 and 7800, all because of this cartridge. Now granted, it only works when you're using this particular cartridge, but, if I'm honest, that completely negates the need for anything like Fred Quimby's Concerto, even though it is a well-made product. But, just giving a shout out to it, and once again, thank you to me, Real Okio Charms. I'm sorry about how this played out. <laughs> he knows, we had dinner over uh, in Ireland once and we joked about it. Now, uh, anyway, so the system itself, the cartridge, very simple to use. Uh, so let me fire it up and we'll actually kind of show it to you in action so you can kind of see the sequence of events here. Uh, so, as I mentioned, I have it hooked up here with HD RetroVision component cables rigged into a RetroTINK 5X, Mike Cheese RetroTINK 5X, and thus it displays like that. Um, so when we power up the system, you'll first see, you know, a little boot screen and all that, and it'll say press start for firmware update. Let's talk about that for a second. This may not be everybody's experience, but you saw how it said start. Uh, the thing is, there is no start button on the Atari 7800 controller, or Atari 2600 controller. Uh, there is only, uh, I believe it's one and two is how they're referred to as, yeah, one and two. If you press either one of those buttons, it does not activate the firmware update screen. You actually require a Sega Genesis controller. And furthermore, you require a Sega Genesis controller in conjunction with the Mega 7800. So what I'm implying here, but I guess I can't actually prove, because this was just my experience, you can't update the firmware unless you have both devices. Um, at least I couldn't get that screen to prompt. Now you might be like, well, who cares about that screen? The thing is, RetroHQ approaches their firmware updates a little bit differently than everybody else. See, somebody like Crix, he just releases the firmware uh, you know, update on Twitter or whatever, and he's like, here you go, everybody go now, let's update your cards. RetroHQ is a little more protective of theirs. So the there's pluses and minuses to that we're not going to go into, but the point is that's what they do. So when you actually press that start button, a QR code is presented as well as a website address. Both of those are unique to your particular cartridge. Now I have to blur it out here because that's just how they do this, but if I were to scan that or go to that website, you're presented with a screen that basically tells you the latest firmware information. Now the plus of this is that it actually told me, hey, your cart's up to date, you don't need to do anything. Here's all the updates it's already had, which is cool. That means my cartridge is up to date. However, if it wasn't, I would also have to go to that page to download the firmware, throw it onto the SD card and run that loader and update everything. But unfortunately I can't show you that because it's already up to date. 
easy process. I've done it on their other toys, but keep in mind, that's how you get the firmware updates. I don't know how else you do it because I think the firmware is actually specifically tied to each individual cartridge, so you can't really share the files around. I'm just making you aware of it that people tend to not like the way RetroHQ does their firmware updates, but I do understand their reasoning for it. Doesn't matter, that's just what you gotta do. So mine's up to date, I'm good to go, so what's next? Uh, the micro SD card itself, uh, it has to be formatted to either FAT or FAT32, that is important. But here's the thing, the Atari 2600 and 7800 libraries are so small as far as data is concerned, it really doesn't matter what kind of size card you have. I, I, I'm just kind of off the top of my head, both of them combined was only like 15 megabytes from what I remember. It's not big, it's very, very small. So you can easily fit like the entire library of both on like any micro SD card you have laying around, not a problem. Um, but as I said, it supports both. Uh, because the original system was backwards compatible with both. And you have various settings that we're going to talk about here. Now, um, the cartridge has uh, a video feature, so you can change some video filter options and things like that. Uh, I didn't really mess around with this too much. I was kind of fine with the defaults. There was also audio options, so I believe it's things like uh, either the Hokey or the Pokey, Hokey Pokey, whatever it is. There's, there's a lot of, like Atari guys know, there's a lot of different audio options within Atari hardware. This thing seems to support all of them and let you custom whatever you want. That's all kind of there. Um, as far as individual game settings, that is a thing as well. It seems to be, there's a couple little options, but the biggest one, and this is kind of surprising, it actually supports save states. So you can, you know, just like with, with emulation, even though this is not, you know, at least software emulation, it's hardware emulation, but it's, you know, you, you're, you have the ability to save and resume, essentially, which is a pretty nice feature, especially on Atari, you know, stuff, because it's stuff can be a real pain. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, it seemed to load everything just fine. I, I did get a little, uh, I'm not going to say triggered, but perhaps, uh, at first I was a little annoyed, and then I was like starting to get nostalgic because I remembered something. I was starting to boot some 2600 games, like Space Invaders. And I started the game, and I couldn't actually get it to work. And I thought, oh, no, what's the problem now? Like, it's just kind of sitting there when I press start and A and all that. It doesn't do anything. Then I remembered, because I actually had a 2600 as a child. I still actually have it. Um... When you play Atari 2600 games on the 7800, and I think this is actually still true on the 2600 itself, you actually have to press like select and reset like on the system itself to actually start the game. I had kind of forgotten that. So yeah, once you remember that, oh, okay, everything's working just fine. So that's actually has nothing to do with this. It's just a reminder like, hey, don't forget to push extra buttons. But yeah, the games work just fine. It's very interesting and unique to see them running in RGB like that. Beautiful. I also, of course, uh, ran it with, uh, you know, 5200 stuff. I ran Robotron for a little while. That was fun. Uh, you know, nothing, or not 5200, 7800 stuff. Uh, I ran, you know, like I said, Robotron there for a bit. I was never very good at this game, but, I, you know, I, it ran just fine. Point is, everything seems to work just fine. There was a cup. I forget what game it was. I did run one game where it kind of said, oh, there's a known, like, problem with this one. Proceed if you wish. So it still booted it, but I, apparently there would be issues in there, which makes me you know, kind of confident that RetroHQ is aware of bugs and is still working on patching them, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and then, of course, just because I had to, because Stereotype, I decided to run E.T. for the Atari 2600, because that's the old joke, is that you got to run that game, right? well, why not, why not? Shout out to Howard Scott Warshaw, who I got to hang out with a bit at Korg's, um, for who developed that game in the first place. Anyway, yeah, so, I mean, it's, it is a, these are nice little toys. Uh, if you're into the Atari 7800 at all, this is kind of ne a necessity because now you have vastly superior controller options, vastly superior video options, and just the convenience of, you know, basically having all the games on a single cartridge if you wish to do that. Um, I would not really argue that there's any actual necessary downfall of the two. I do think it's, assuming this isn't just a me issue, because if it is just a me issue, I apologize, but if it is something where this is required, having, requiring both in order to be able to update the cartridge, I think is kind of weird, but maybe that was a limitation of the hardware. Maybe there was no way to send that, you know, information to this cartridge without an extra button. I don't know. I'm not, I don't know. I just, I don't know. But uh, beyond that, I, I really have no complaints about it. The controller thing did exactly what it's, the Mega 7800 did exactly what it's supposed to do. The uh, game drive did exactly what it's supposed to do. And the video quality is amazing, which to me is the biggest thing. I think, not that I needed to do this, but I will admit, this is just 
fantasy bonus feature. It would have been nice if the cartridge was designed to look more like, say, like a Game Shark or something, where it actually had an additional control, uh, you know, a cartridge port on top. That way, if you wanted to, you could play an original cartridge on it and use the RGB out of it, kind of like the RGB blaster that Crix made. Being able to use it for multiple purposes would have just been cool, but I can also see why people would think that was totally pointless and certainly would add expense to the device that people are like, I don't care about that. I wanted to get this card for the game support as it is. I don't need a cartridge slot. But that's just me. I think it would be nice to be able to play the original games and use the video output. But hey, that's just me. Um, beyond that, yeah, nothing really else to say. So a huge shout out to RetroTowers.co.uk for sending this stuff my way. Again, I'll put a link in the description to both of these so you can check them out uh, if you want to pick them up. And of course to RetroHQ who had no idea I was making this video, but you make good products and thank you for continuing to do so and I look forward to the continued things you guys make. Thank you, thank all of you very much for watching. If you could, please like, comment, subscribe, check out all the social media stuff in the description, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, Patreon, etc. Thank you so much and I'll see you all later.